Oops, wrong, wrong one. How about this one? <laughs> Get ready to strap in for another exciting episode of No Driving Gloves, where Derek, John, and Will will use over 75 years combined industry knowledge to bring you a bare-knuckled view of the collector car hobby. So let's get rolling. Well, hello, everybody. We're back again for another episode. We're going to sit down and we're going to do one of these fantasy things. I've listened to a few different podcasts, and this is a kind of fantasy we want to uh, discuss and see where we would go since we all have such similar car tastes. And we're going to look at if we had like a quarter million dollars, somebody gave us $250,000, we had to drive cross country, uh, no time limits or anything, what would we drive? And then we've got a couple of questions to add to that is what would we drive if we could spend a quarter million dollars on a car and then keep the change at the end forever? We had to give the car back, and then we'll look at it from the other side. If we only had $5,000 to spend and do the same, I'm really not sure where I would want to be, what car would do that well. Will, how's your week been, and uh, what do you think, uh, do you have an opening statement for that, opening thought? Well, the the week's been pretty crazy. We spent the last weekend at the NSRA Street Rod Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky. Got home late Sunday night. You know, hit the hit the concrete floor rolling hard and getting ready for another outing this weekend in Bowling Green. You know, it's a tough decision to to decide. You know, what kind of car you would do that in. You know, my mind's going a million directions right now, so might uh, pass the torch on to Derek and see how his week went and let me ponder on this for a minute. Sure, make me talk now. Um, <laughs> we're so good at show prep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's just shove it off to the next guy. Uh, just don't be the last one in line. Uh, no, week's been good. You know, mainly my week revolves around museum work. Uh, haven't been to any shows lately uh, with any of the museum vehicles, but we're we're preparing for a, a pretty big exhibit on. Uh, uh, that's going to basically look at 225 years of transportation in Kentucky. So got a lot of work ahead of me. I've already done a lot of work. The The beginnings of a uh, hectic couple of weeks is, is what I'm looking forward to right now. But so far, uh, everything behind me has been pretty good. It's just what's ahead that's going to be a rough patch. Yeah, sounds like a fun topic tonight. <laughs> um, I think I'm in the same boat as you guys, and it's, it's going to be an interesting conversation. and. It's probably going to take me a second to to figure out exactly which cars I'd be driving. Well, I'll, I'll recap my week too. I, I think we should we should probably let people know what we kind of do during the week. And mine's a little bit like Will's. I've uh, just had a couple of events to put together. Had a TV personality chat with today, and hopefully he becomes a listener to the podcast. Kind of mentioned it to him. I'll be out and about this weekend, not car-related, but maker-related, uh, Southern Makers. I mentioned it in the last episode. By the time you hear it, that'll have been concluded. But what would I spend a quarter million dollars on to drive cross-country? I'm assuming I'm going to do this paved roads. And do I really want to, like, cannonball run it? Because if I got a quarter million bucks, you could probably spend a hundred and a half, hundred and seventy-five, get something dis- decent, and use the other seventy-five for bail money. But hmm, it's it's kind of a challenging challenging prospect. Two two hundred and fifty. There's a lot of things to drive cross country. You buy something from Will that's modified, or do you buy something that's brand new, super exotic, or do you get a Tesla Model S and let it do all of the work and uh, enjoy the scenery? I'm a little lost to say that. That's that's too much money for me to make that decision. Yeah, I, I, I got to agree with you, John, because it it's a lot of money and it's it leaves you so many options that it's it's kind of the, the world is your oyster, if you uh, if you will. A little disappointed that none of you guys want to take a brass era car cross country, though. I mean, that's I you know, it, it really depends on uh, what we're going here for. Like John said, is it cannonball run style or are we just having a nice, you know, couple week drive across the country? Because if if that's the case, I'm, I'm probably going to go brass era. Well, we can we can save that to the five thousand dollar one, right? Uh, you're not in the brass era world much, are you? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just two hundred fifty two hundred fifty thousand is uh, you know that's that's uh, you know you you can't get some of the the big you know ninety horses for that. Well, 
Don't you see that on some truck mud flaps, though? Something about gas, ass, grass, or brass, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Brass. There we go. (laughs) I could imagine what some of the, just some of the headlights on those cars cost because, dude, to me, that's some of my favorite part of brass air cars is, is just the styling alone, just in the headlights. So there's no telling what some of them things are would be worth yeah that's that's why you take them off on the cross-country journey and use something different so they don't get damaged (laughs) gotcha you gotcha (laughs) you don't even need to get back to brass era i know you've put a lot of money in modern headlamps but to go back i had to buy two bulbs for some marshall headlamps for a car 20 years ago 2500 bucks a piece and we had to send somebody to france to get them because they wouldn't ship them to us (laughs) i I guess if if i had to spend two hundred fifty thousand drive cross country it would be definitely in a high-end hot rod something that the uh, top would go down on more than likely ls powered probably with some turbos or something on it probably uh probably like a, a a big car that would float down the road uh something that would grab attention from coast to coast and to me one of the one of the greatest things of driving an old car on the road is when you stop at a gas station you know you're the coolest guy there and everybody wants to talk to you about your car and that's just that's just cool to me that uh, what I'm driving interests other people so it would definitely be a uh, a high-end hot rod of some sort I'll probably tell you a year making model before the end of the podcast, but I'll have to think on that for a minute. Well, I'm thinking we need to add that qualifier. We're going to do it Route 66, and so we're not going to go New York to L.A. We're going to go basically Chicago to L.A. What would you want to there do? There we go. You know, and your back roads, back roads most of the way, a little bit of four-lane interstate every now and then. You go through the Rockies, you go through the desert, you go through the Midwest, and you you know you're not going to do that bonsai at 160 miles an hour. You can do that on Interstate 74 or whatever you decide to shoot across country on. So we'll put that qualifier in, and that kind of I think adds a little bit of romanticism to the uh, to the trip. And we can start thinking, you know, that, that's what the movie Cars is based on is hanging out on Route 66. So, although I would like to ride with Derek in the brass era car for probably almost halfway you you do it do it jesse james style you drive drive the brass era car to la and you take a jet home and let somebody else bring it back to you (laughs) there you go (laughs) you you think you'll make it that far oh i only read about all these things back back in the brass era where people went cross country you never hear about the return trip I'm thinking of the package you discussed an episode or two ago, but the offset front suspension after he he crashed it or hit a hit a ditch or a uh, river wrong, and we never talked about that car coming back home. Well, well, they shipped it out to San Francisco and then drove it back. So you know, okay, still still one way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I think if we're going with the caveat of going across Route 66, and it's a leisurely drive. I'm going Brass Era, and if I've got a quarter mil, I'm looking at something um, early Brass Era, maybe early Stoddard Dayton, Stevens Durier, one of this probably smaller horse uh, simplex Brass Era cars, and I mean, they're they're capable of, you know, easily 65, 75 mile an hour um, if tuned up right and, and everything's running the way they should. And this, I would say, is with the caveat that I don't get to keep the spare change when I'm done. Um, hopefully, I get to keep the car. I definitely think that's where I'd be going if it's if it's a leisurely cruise across Route 66, just for the heck of it. That's where I'm going to be. So I'm a, one of the one of the bigger horsepower early brass era cars. I'm still at a quarter million dollars. Too much. There, there's too many, too many choices. First, I think you know, '60s era Ferrari. Well, that, too, so much for that. I you know, got to do it in a 308 or a 355. And you're going to do it for less than a quarter mil. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to say for the five grand is everybody's going to look at me like I'm nuts. 
But we, I kind of did it when I was a kid, or I would probably say 14, it was eighth grade year. We, we did a cross-country type trip in our uh, Dodge 600 ES turbo convertible. And I would almost say I'd want to try it again in something like that, you know, if we're doing the $5,000 budget. That was a fun trip, and, you know, that brings back some some memories and it what we didn't really do Route 66, but it was it was Central Illinois, and we drove to Los Angeles, and we eventually you know eventually got there. So I I I would say that me and my stupid fetish with mid mid 80s Chrysler four cylinders before I decide the quarter million dollar car, give me my Dodge 600 ES turbo convertible, and believe it or not, I almost bought one. It was the only one ever produced in the color purple back in the mid mid-early 80s, Chrysler would actually custom paint a car for you on the line. They'd take it off the line, paint it. Our family, with the corporate vans we had, we didn't like white vans. We wanted fire engine red, and that wasn't a factory truck color, factory van color. They would pull vans off the line for us, paint them red, and when that ended, we ended up having to go with the white vans. At one point in time, they would do that for you in the 80s, Lee Iacocca's day. You know, we build what you want, not what we think you want. And you actually ordered cars. You didn't just go to the dealership and buy off the lot a lot of the time. And ours was black. And the the ES turbo convertible, I think they only built 500 of those. Like I said, I, I miss getting the only purple one ever made. But there, there's my $5,000 car. I'm going to work on spending 250 even if it's just given to me and I can got it to blow, I still got to think about it. So wait, is it bad that I've already come up with my my quarter million dollar or so car? <laughs> you know, John, if we're if we're gonna jump to the the five thousand dollar car, you know, I I think again it's that personal kind of uh, story like you have. I uh, honestly, I'd probably my sixty one Ford Falcon. I love the car; it drives great. Um, it's only got the 144, so it doesn't like to get out of its own way sometimes. I I think the way I'm going to look at it on top of that, that it's, it's just a fun car. It's a comfortable car. The Ford Falcons are easy to work on. So if you have an issue while you're going across country, I mean, they're, they're a simple car. Um, there's not a lot to them. You know, if you have something go wrong, it's easy to get under the car, get to any of the mechanical end of things that are in there. It's you can get a Ford Falcon relatively cheap, probably you know some of them well under that five thousand dollar mark. You know they're just a, in my opinion, a good cruiser and and a fun car to to just drive around. Um, so I think my five thousand dollar car easily would be you know either my current Ford Falcon or um, you know buying another one and and taking it across country. Yeah, I I, I got it. I got my five thousand dollar vehicle right here. Come on, Will, give it to us. Hey. Forty-seven through fifty-three Chevrolet truck, completely original. I know y'all's y'all's just headphones just exploded, but that's what it would be to me. I love those trucks. I love them original. I love them hot rotted, and you know you can pick one up, all original in decent condition for under five thousand dollars. Six cylinder, straight shift. Easy to work on, cool, uh, but that that would be my five thousand dollar vehicle. And you know, you can buy stuff along the way, throw it into bed, keep on rolling. Uh, they sit up off the ground a little bit, so if you want to take a dirt road and go off and venture somewhere else, heck, go for it. So that that would be my five thousand dollar vehicle. I'm amazed you can buy that for five grand. <laughs> original, original. Not, you know, souped up, hot rotted, and kind of rough shape original, really, you know. I mean, I just bought a 55 First Series for 2500 bucks. so... Can you hop in it and drive that across the country? If I had to spend, you know, I, if I spent another 1000 bucks on it, yeah, sure could. Okay, I'll, I'll pretend to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> I say I'm trying to check eBay and they're only finding one and it's forty thousand dollars. Of course, it's you know it's an after truck. There we go. Uh, here, uh, that's a '65 Ford truck. It's eighteen hundred. Sixty-four, fifteen five. Chevy truck. Chevy. Oh. Yeah. That might make it easier. John, are you afraid of old American iron? 
Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I think so. What do you mean, old American iron? I'm I'm driving a Chrysler across country. That's old. Okay, twenty two hundred dollars. Buy it now. Five thousand fifty. Fourteen bids. So you can talk them down fifty bucks. Nine nine hundred and seventy dollars for a lifted four by four long bed. There you go. See, <laughs> here's one for thirty seven fifty right here. Now let me let me get this straight. I'm expected to work on this thing on the way. I'm not looking for one that's been restored back to perfection. I want something that looks old, like you just drug it out of a field and you got it running, and let's go. Because that would be part of the fun of it, is breaking down on the side of the road and having to get parts for it and calling your buddies that live from coast to coast to come out and help you. You know, it'd be part of the fun, so... Don't go buy something that you know is going to make it. Make it interesting. I'd feel like I wasted my $99 on my AAA. Okay, I'm finding a few in that range. See? That could get me in trouble. I get Derek went away for a second. Uh-oh. You'd have to search for one to get one for that money, but I think you could. And I believe definitely you you could do it, and if you added the the criteria like you said that you're willing to work on it, and then there's breakdowns. Me fantasize about a road trip. I don't fantasize about breaking down. I want to <laughs> point A to point B, and that's it. Yeah, here's one. It's a it's a '52 Chevy. It's a big truck, you know, like a one ton. Runs and drives thirty nine hundred bucks. I think Derek might be rejoining us. Are you there, Derek? Yes, I certainly am. Well, we, we kind of paused a little bit waiting for your uh, comeback before I totally disrailed this, and like I always do. What, what were you picking on me about and my American cars and my love of them? Well, you know, I mean, well, you know, your your no, your fear of the old American iron, John. That's that's you know. I don't count 1980s as old American iron, especially seeing we were already into the, the point of importing steel at that point. You know, old American iron is old American iron. You got to get back into the, you know, that the 40s era truck that uh, that uh, Will wants to drive and, you know, 60s era Falcons and heck, brass era cars for that fact. But I'm I'm still waiting to hear your guys' $250,000 car choices. Hmm... I'm still thinking. 250 drive cross country. And it doesn't matter. I don't get to keep the change. So I, I may as well spend all of it. I'm probably... I think I can get into one for 250. And since we're not... and um, Let me just totally emphasize... I'm not into American cars. I'm kind of thinking a Lamborghini Espada. Or can I still get into a, can I get into like a 365 Ferrari Coupe? You know, like a single headlight car from the 60s for that kind of money? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what those cars are are bringing right now i'm I'm looking it up right now <laughs> i think it's going to be tight it's it's going to be tight on that one on the ferrari I th i'm pretty sure i can do an espada for that mm. boy that, that's a lot harder topic than i thought it was going to be that's why we love a challenge yeah it's uh so while you guys are mulling it over then and, and doing your price fact checking I'll move on to, I think we were going to also do the quarter million and you get to keep the uh, change, right? Yeah. So I think I'm going to uh, take the Will route with his $5,000 choice, but I think if I did the quarter million and got to keep the change, I would probably be driving either a one-ton Chevy or a Ford, probably dually. I'm going to have the longest enclosed trailer I possibly can behind it. And uh, I'm going to take the change and buy <laughs> buy whatever I find <laughs> along the way that is involves old cars. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take my um, 
me and Derek's just going to go in halves <laughs> and I'm going to ride with him. And you're, you're just going to keep your whole 250 grand and spend it. I, I said we'd go in halves. <laughs> Actually, I need to get a trailer and just follow behind you because we're not going to be going after the same cars anyway. That's true. It would make more sense if we both had trucks and trailers and we could pick out what each of us wanted. It'd be Yeah, because we're going to totally right. different things. That's right. So, perfect. I'm there. <laughs> and... Wait a minute. I got a dually in a 48-foot trailer, so <laughs> I don't even have to spend You don't anybody. even have to go halves, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to almost say that quarter million and keep the change... If I can buy one, I would do a 993 Porsche convertible. I think I can. I, I'm positive I can get one for 100, maybe a little bit less. If I could get a Carrera, um, what, what is it? The, the 993 RS America. I think I can even get into one of those for under a quarter mil. I think Porsches, even though I've owned them, and I kind of dislike them. I've always told anybody that has one, if you want a nice ex- semi-exotic or exotic car that you can get in and go across country and not worry about and have some space, you, you can't beat a Porsche. It's They just do it. They do everything well. You know what's going to break on them. There's my choice. I'm, I'm going to say a 993 Porsche. I would prefer to do it in a Carrera, Carrera convertible. Cabriolet, Targa, something that the roof comes off of. But if I had to go to a coupe, I would really have to consider getting into an RS. Now, is that your is that your two hundred and fifty? Keep the change, or that's not keeping the change. That, that's my two fifty. Keep the change. Okay. Okay. And if we, and if we're gonna have to say we need to be able to put antique plates on this thing and pretend we're driving to a show in Los Angeles. I might jump back and think about like a 250 SL Mercedes. Yeah, there you go. You know, get something that's nice, you know, the 70s era Mercedes right before they went to the the four headlight, what I always think is the John, or the uh I want to say heart to heart Jonathan Hart and I can't remember what Stephanie Powers' name was in that show. That Mercedes just a touch touch too new, but I think you can get into that 250 and I, I'm still spending 100 grand. You know, if I wanted to be economical like you guys and buy a $40,000 car and go cross-country, yeah, but I may as well have a little bit of fun with it. So, we've locked out... What have we locked out so far? We've locked down our $5,000 cars. I've got a 61 Ford Falcon. Will, what was yours? A uh, 47 through 53 Chevrolet truck. Half ton, one ton, it don't matter. Just a cool old truck. That needs work. All right, and then John, what did you have? Mine would be an 84 or 85 Dodge 600 ES turbo convertible. All right, so we've all locked those down pretty quickly, pretty easily. We've kind of, I think Will and I have kind of jokingly done our uh, quarter million dollar car, keeping the change with uh, truck and trailer rigs. John is actually, you've kind of locked yours in. Do Will and I need to get more serious about our quarter million dollar uh, cars and, uh, you know, keep the change? Is that is that what we need to do next? Yeah, I I know what mine would be. In all in all honestly, it would it would be a uh a 55 Porsche 550 Spider. James for, Dean. For a James, quarter for a quarter million? <laughs> you're, oh, you're, you're, you're a talking replica. A, oh, okay. a replica. <laughs> you know. Okay, okay cuz not, not a real one. <laughs> see, you're you're only about five and a half million shy. Yeah, I know. I, I I, I figured most people would understand <laughs> that I ain't getting that, Is that it? for <laughs> two hundred and fifty thousand. But yeah, just a little fiberglass body five fifty spider, so I could fill out James Dean. Why not? And I'll be honest, that that kind of crossed my mind. And fortunately, at work we we have we have a Beck five fifty, and we have a uh, inner inner mechanica. 356. I'd lean more to the 356, but fun little car to do that in. And 
what crossed my mind when I was thinking about it is if anybody's familiar with the magazine Sports Car Market, they're kind of doing that right now where they started in somewhere in Florida. They might have they started somewhere in Florida. It might have been Fort Lauderdale, and they're driving to California to the Mo- to Monterey, and going cross country in a Bradley GT. Now you you said Porsche, Bradley GT. It's still a Volkswagen Pan kit car, and they're doing that cross country. And it's if you haven't taken the time or you haven't seen any of the posts on Facebook about it, look up SCM Bradley GT and read some of the trials and tribulations of driving a Volkswagen cross country. <laughs> it's, it's funny as can be. And Will and I both graduated from Furson college many years ago with one of the professors at McPherson. And he actually participated in this drive, picked the car up, I believe in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm not sure where he had to drop it off, but he had it for about a week and, he totally rewired the car while he had it. He had a new back window made by the upholstery instructor at McPherson and had some very eloquent writings about <laughs> about this car. It was it was very humorous the t- the period of time he had and really the amount of work he did do it is probably more than the guy that actually built the car in the first place. Yeah, it has been fun keeping up with that. I was going to kind of I guess I forgot it was to keep the change. So Will's got 30, 35 into his and walks away with $220,000. Now, how much money am I going to have to spend working on the daggone thing to get there? You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're if you're spending <laughs> if you're spending 30 or 35, you you aren't going to have to you aren't going to have too many breakdowns, I think. Because you're going to have a and have a new crate motor, and you could actually even at that kind of money get one that uh, has a Subaru drivetrain in it, <laughs> and a flat fl- I'll just, platform. I'll just I'll just build one that's LS powered. I'm trying to decide if it would fit. Oh, I could make it fit. <laughs> now I, but, uh, I, I I've mentioned. But- I've mentioned to you about possibly knowing somebody who wants you to do a 917 kit with an LS. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Send them on. I I believe you could get one in that in one of those cars. I mean, I did put a uh, anything can supercharged <laughs> late model Hemi in a '65 Dodge Dart, and them cars are pretty small. He's got a shoehorn. So I could. I believe I could get one in there. And. Well, <laughs> coat hanger. What, what, what just crossed my mind is I read something, and here we are talking about, our, uh, I guess, Will's friends again. Scotty DTV had his uh, our new video out recently on a LS-powered Camaro that's a, tw- a 12-cylinder LS, and I was thinking of him reducing that LS to a 6-cylinder, which I'm going to say isn't that crazy because we've got a motorcycle company in town that Modus that does a... Uh, v4 in their motorcycles and it's basically an ls motor cut in half so it could be done now that would be the cool thing to do is to put the ls mm. motor in that porsche the 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 modus v4 in the porsche that would be cool oh you got you that, got me that thinking would be now awesome i wonder if uh yes motor sells motors <laughs> without the bike <laughs> okay done what kind so, of transmission can you hook up to it I'm not sure, uh, but I'll say Modus has built a four-wheeled type vehicle with one of their motors, and the gentleman I was speaking with this afternoon, I believe, has built a LS-powered car type thing, so it can be done. Gotcha. It might not have reverse, but it can be done. Who needs reverse? So, Derek, that leaves you. Will and I have got our, our change. Will kept most of his money, and I only got a hundred and a half. All right, quarter million with change. Um, and I'm looking at this again from the leisurely drive across country. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up a little bit in years. I'm not gonna go brass era. That'll just stay with the the quarter million blowout. I'm gonna go with a probably just for the style and class of it. And I think I've mentioned in the past on some shows, it's it's one of my probably more favorite 50s era sports cars. 53 or 54 Nash Healy. 
So you're looking at, I think they're going from like, depending on condition, um, you know, one, you could jump in, run and drive. I think they're going right now, maybe 65 to 80,000 for a pretty nice one. I, I think that'd probably be my choice. I can see that. That would be trying to decide on the reliability factor, but you guys said you don't mind wrenching on things. Well, yeah, I don't mind wrenching on things, but also you got to remember it's it fairly basic, you know, Nash inline six cylinder engine. You know, it had the three carburetor manifold set up to to hop it up a little bit, give it a little more performance. But other than that, I mean, it's basic inline Nash six cylinder engine power in that. If you got to work on it, again, it's it's one of those cars. It's not terribly difficult. Okay, to summarize, quarter million with change. We're gonna say nine ninety three Porsche for me. 53 Nash Healy for you, and we'll go ahead and just say a Beck 550 Porsche replica for Will. Derek's is kind of expected. Will's kind of has me off a little bit. And I have a thing for early Porsches, and I don't know. It's just as a kid, it's kind of one of those things that the 550 poster on my wall, and one of my uncles had a Porsche, so I've kind of always really liked uh the Porsches and it shouldn't surprise you too much. We talked the other day about that. Wanting to build me a little no, don't, don't give away your <laughs> don't don't give away your secrets. I'm not. Let's go this way. We'll go Manhattan. We'll pick a Plaza Hotel Manhattan. We'll start at the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan. Cross country, cannonball run, just like the movie, but we're gonna end in Burbank at Leno's garage. And you can't have anything newer than 1980. So you're in the movie theme. What would you buy? Cost no object. But if it breaks, you're, disqu- is, you're, you're disqualified. This is easy. I just won. I'm getting a DeLorean. Duh. I, I mean, you know, I'm there before we even leave. Problem is, DeLoreans officially didn't come out until 1981. That That's true. That's very true. He got you there. Y'all suck. <laughs> <laughs> really? 80s? Not 19? No. No, no, no. Pre 1980. Pre 1980. You can get anything from 1886 in your Ben's patent motor wagon all the way up to. Yeah, but you said we were trying to get there fast. <laughs> a 1980 Chevette. Wait, and it has to be. Uh, it has to be. I take it factory, oh, basically pre nineteen eighty. This is a turtle race all the way around the board. Like Will can't say he's going to get a nineteen seventy five, you know, Chevy pickup and put an LS engine in it or something, right? This has to be. We have to go stock. <laughs> all the tech. All, all the technology has to be pre nineteen eighty. Jackie Chan's car doesn't qualify. But keep in mind, they did use a Tropicana NASCAR car in that. They did use a modified ambulance. And I think I'm going to go ahead and disqualify the Ferrari Daytona because that car actually held the cross-country record up until just about five or six years ago, driven by Brock Yates. I believe it was yeah, Brock Yates You know, had, had that that record that he set when they were running the Cannonball. So we'll dis- disqualify that one car, but other than that, what what are we doing it in? I'm going pan, I'm going uh, Pantera, baby. I can see that. Oh, keep it American. Does it have to be road like legal? Oh, that just totally changes it. Exactly. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say yes. All right, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm definitely. I would definitely go Pantera, just for the sheer fact of there's a little bit of uh, exotic there to it, but it is, you know, Ford powered, so sold at Mercury dealerships with an Italian body. That's right. So yeah, that's what I'd do. I'd do it in a Pantera for sure. You notice I'm picking these small cars that I have no room in, so. I could be I could be folded up like a pencil. Say, and and you're the, you're the uh, biggest of us three. All right. I've got one in mind. I'm on the fence about it, but I think I might go with it. And of course, I don't have an answer to this question. I'm trying to make up my mind here. Give me give me give me a moment. 
Batmobile's out. Man, no. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna go 1965 Aston Martin DB5. There you go. You're you're going straight Roger Moore for it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so that's even the car he used in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, come on. He's got a great last name. Come on. I mean, it did fit. <laughs> and now, of course. Yeah, those those cars are freaking cool too. Even to this day, you know that's that is a great cross country, I mean GT car. And here I am uh, coming up with the question with no no answer because we know I'm not going with a muscle car or no, I'm not going with anything American. I'm thinking through my little foreign. Now I, I I'm going to point out that if anybody noticed, I just went the probably the most American car driving guy here. Just for this race, picked a foreign car. <laughs> well, well, we just saying. <laughs> you did, you did, didn't you? <laughs> well, we we did put that qualifier. You had to get there quickly, and if it broke down, you were disqualified. <laughs> and and Will kind of went with a European car too. He can say all he wants, but Di Tommaso kind of did that. Hey, the heart of that baby was American. See, I, I'd almost go back to my Espada for me, but it's as unreliable as... <laughs> so it's good. It's good. I have a friend who bought an Espada new in 74 in New York and drove it home to Chicago, and he made it. So I know, you know, in that time frame, you could do it. Now, keep in mind, we're also ending at Leno's garage, so he's going to make funny if you show up in the wrong thing. So I'm at a loss. <laughs> I stumped myself. I know what my second one would be. I'm going to go with a uh, 67 big block Corvette. Pass everything but a gas station. But them little lightweight things are pretty quick with a big block in it. Yeah, I think you have a hard time making up time with the. <laughs> no, I'll get a. I'll, I'll go ahead and get me. I was going to say you get a b- big tank a big car, car, but you're still going right. to go through gas just as fast. You're just going to have to stop <laughs> fewer times. Yeah, that's that's going to be the trick. That's right. Done. Well, yeah, no, no. I see where he's going with this. You you get a you get the big tank car, and then you have a gas truck. You know, a tanker following you. You just do mid air, you know, refueling, just like the the military does. You just pull up behind it, have them throw the hose out, hook it up. You, you just keep rolling. Well, let's let's face it. A uh, a Pantera is not going to get real good fuel mileage. I either. think it's going to get better than uh, your your big black Corvette. Yeah, but it. And be I fun. think I think I figured it out, and I'm going to be sunburnt as heck, and I don't sunburn easily. But I'd probably do it in a 289 Cobra. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, then that's a good choice. That's a good choice. Interesting turn of events here. Derek picks a British car. Will picks an Italian car, and I pick an American car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! Uh, can't win for trying. <laughs> All right, so so my two hundred and fifty thousand dollar car, I didn't come up with a year maker model. It would probably be a well, it wouldn't probably be. It would be a built nineteen thirty five Ford three window with every bell, every whistle that was. You know, a modern, super nice hot rod made out of a thirty-five Ford three window. That's what it would be. And yes, it's very easy to spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on building a thirty-five Ford. At least in my shop, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can see you I can see you in that and. You know, I know I, I, I mentioned like three different cars, but I think I'm going to lock mine down as well. Although I'm probably not going to touch the, the complete 250000 on it. Probably be more around a, a hundred twenty to hundred and fifty. dollars uh, You know, just cruising across, probably a 1910 Stevens Durier Model Y Touring, seven-passenger Touring. They're... A fantastic car, smooth running, big big six cylinder engine, 
just a fantastic car to get rolling and just cruise down the road in. Cool. And I will go back and say my 3543 window will not have an LS motor in it. It will have a late model Ford motor in it. Just FYI. EcoBoost? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I wouldn't rule that out, but probably uh, more like a turbo coyote. Yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. <laughs> if we got 250. <laughs> <laughs> if I got 250K, you know, why not? We'll just, we'll just, we'll eco, we'll eco boost this coyote here with a straight shift. That was an interesting, I want to say interesting conversation, what we all came up with and whether or not we'd pick a, the second time around, if we continued this for another 60 minutes and figured out, uh, what, what, and asked the same questions. Do we need to recap for all the listeners, or do you think they took notes, or do you, do you think they care? I, I would like to add one thing. I do think it would be really, 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 really fun to drive cross country in a trophy truck. <laughs> so. <laughs> You could just bypass all the traffic, hit the desert if you wanted to hit the desert. But I, th- I think that would, uh, if you could just go cross country in anything, uh, it don't matter one way or another, I'd probably pick a trophy truck. It's like the me- meme I saw today of the guy working on a Spitfire uh, barn find, and it was an airplane half hanging out of his garage. So. <laughs> I will post that to Instagram. I think I stole the picture from wherever I saw it on Facebook. So, Derek, why don't you go ahead and run down your four four vehicles from tonight's discussion? All right. Uh, let's see. For the 5,000 and under class, uh, cruising across Route 66, I went with a early 60s uh, Ford Falcon. You know, easy car to work on, uh, maintain, something goes wrong on the road. Easy to get under there, fix it, take care of it, and, and get going again. And I personally, I think they're a great cruising car. Quarter million with change, after the joke about taking a truck and trailer across country, was a 53 to 54 uh, Nash Healy Le Mans Coupe. And that would basically, for me, is the styling with that car. A uh, beautiful car. 53, 54, a little difference at the rear window design makes the car look a little different, both still very classy um, and has a, a good American, you know, Nash six cylinder engine in it. Well, let's see, quarter million dollar car, don't keep the change, was uh, 1910 Stevens Durier Model Y, seven passenger touring car. Um, just an awesome brass era car to get out on the road and and just cruise with and smooth running big six cylinder probably one of my more favorite brass era cars and then let's see we did the cannonball run pre-1980 thanks john but i went with the 1965 aston martin db5 incredible car in my opinion aston martin did a, a fantastic job on that car a quick car zero to 60 was in something like around eight seconds if i remember right on that car which for 65 Pretty good, pretty good rating. Of course, uh, James Bond drove it. It's got to be good enough for me, right? My five to break it all down, uh, the $5,000 vehicle was a 47 through 53 Chevrolet truck. Um, That would need a little bit of work. Nothing super fancy, something to see the country in and maybe find some cool old parts stores down the road because you know you're going to have to work on it a little bit. Uh, my $250,000 no change given back, which I would spend every dime on, would be a 35 Ford three window, late model Ford powered, uh, air conditioned seats, cruise control. I mean, just uh, ultra modern conveniences, but nostalgia looking on the outside. 250000 keep the change, was a 550 Porsche replica, buy one for. Thirty, forty thousand dollars that's ultimately ready to ride, have fun, keep the change. And then um the last one was kind of a gumball rally run, nothing newer than nineteen seventy nine, is that right, John? Nineteen eighty, but either way. Okay. Okay. Um and I picked a uh a Pantera 
to do that in. So there's there's the breakdown of mine. Okay, and I'll recap mine. Five k or less. I'm doing the Dodge six hundred turbo convertible, ES model. Hundred uh, k, uh, and keep the change. I think I finally narrowed it down to the uh, Porsche nine nine three. You know, it's kind of the end. I want to say it's the end of the air cooled. Uh, for two two fifty, no change. I went with the Espada, and I think I can still get one for under two fifty, which is crazy because twenty five years ago they were twenty five grand. They weren't even worth rebuilding. And in a turn for the ch- or a change for me, for the Cannonball Run car, I'm doing a two eighty nine Cobra. Like I said, everybody kind of stuck to their roots except for the cannonball run where we all reversed roles and in my opinion the best suggestion out of all four of these categories for the if we wanted to pick an ultimate winner quarter million and uh, keep the change one ton dually and trailer across the country because you can use that change to find something else i agree 100 percent. yep all right Derek, you won well, it was kind of, we both had the idea, because you kind of went with it with the 5,000 under at first, you know, your truck going across, so, yeah, we'll 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 share the victory. All right, we'll just say John lost. How about that? I like that. <laughs> first time for everything, I don't know how to deal with that. We didn't vote on the winner, I just chose the winner, so I have to concede. It was probably the best answer as we were reviewing them all, and I wrote down all, wrote down everything, because I think the... Uh, Follow us on Instagram and watch for the posts during the week, and we'll put each day the cars from the appropriate categories, and then we'll put a picture of Will's Dooley and Trailer (laughs) up as the ultimate winner. (laughs) Maybe, maybe not. I know he's on his way out to wax it this evening, so (laughs) once we... (laughs) we (laughs) Shut up, John. we, We finish recording, so... I think everybody that's here, by the time this comes out, we will be back from the Makers Festival. We'll be back from Bowling Green, and we might recap our adventures. But thanks, everybody, for joining us again tonight. Or I'm going to encourage you to please go ahead and follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. You can check out our Patreon page where you can get early releases of the show, and there's ways to get stickers and some, some merch if you want to. We're going to conclude it there, guys. We'll talk next week.